Okay, I guess I'm recording. Uh, yeah, I see the counter there. All right. Hello, everybody. I am now on OBS, a streaming software that I had on my last laptop, but it glitched somehow. And anyway, that was a long story. Uh, that didn't work out too good for me with that computer. But now I've got it back on this one, and Kathy helped me with it today. So um, I'm going to bring to you what I what came to me. Was it yesterday or today, this morning? I can't remember for sure. But I was just sitting in my chair over there talking to the Lord about us leaving soon. And, ha and I start, I prayed. I said, Lord, don't let me be like Lot's wife and look back wondering about my puppy. And I got thinking about people with uh, children who are maybe a little past the age of accountability. Or maybe they're even not. Maybe you got an infant in a crib. Maybe you got a husband that you really love, but you're pretty sure he's not in the first fruits. Or whoever. You may have a pet you really love. And you know he's going. You've been told. Lord told me. He said there was going to be mass rapture of the animals right after we left. Angels would come for them. Okay, so I got to talking about that and thinking I need to make a video, a warning for people to not look back like Lot's wife. That's what this picture is about. This figure way here in the back, I have to believe, must be Lot's wife. Kind of straggling behind before she actually turned around, maybe, and turned into a pillar of salt. And these are God's angels leading Lot and his two daughters right here in the back row, out by the hand. Okay, and so I was going to look up the scripture, and I wanted to use the OBS and pull up the Blue Letter Bible and have that on the screen. But since I've got it here on this cell phone, and this is confirmation, y'all, why I, I know I'm supposed to bring you this. All right. First, I'm going to share a short dream that one of the members of the Team Jesus got last night, this morning dream. I was told you will be going with the heavenly ancient ones. That's all she put. And uh, of course there were some reactions. Like good, you know, and who are the heavenly ancient ones? And someone asked that. And are they angels? Are they the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I wonder who they are. Okay. Alright. So let me scroll on past the comments. I'm going to go to the scriptures. Genesis 19, verse 16. Lot flees to Zor. Verse 15. At daybreak, the angels hurried Lot along, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. Notice, Lot and his wife, and his two daughters. His wife was supposed to be spared. She was a candidate. As many have been a candidate for the first fruits. But lost their place or will. Because they refuse to believe in a certain something. Or they're not repenting. Or they're just not giving up something they need to. They're putting before God. I don't know. I don't know. But this tells us Lot's wife was supposed to be spared. But the but verse 16, but when Lot hesitated, even Lot hesitated, the men grabbed his hand. The men were angels, y'all. Grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters. And they led them safely out of the city because of the Lord's compassion for them. 17. As soon as the men had brought them out, one of them said, Run for your lives. Do not look back and do not stop anywhere on the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. Okay. Now, as we know, Lot's wife turned to see what was happening to her beloved city. She turned. 
and God turned her into a pillar of salt. Now, did he spare her soul and spirit to heaven? Maybe. This was done and allowed to teach us a lesson. Okay? It's in the Bible for a reason. It, was happen it happened for a reason. God was clearly teaching us. The Old Testament isn't just history. It isn't just all about what happened before. It's what's going to happen again. The book of Ecclesiastes makes it clear that what has happened before will happen again. Okay? Now, in 2 Peter 2, this is what Jennifer added. She's the one that got the dream. 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them deep into hell, placing them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness among the eight, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction, reducing them to ashes as an example of what is coming on the ungodly, you see, this is Peter. This is Second Peter 2. Peter is telling us in this gospel, this book of the Bible, reducing them to ashes. Okay. He condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction, reducing them to ashes as an example of what is coming on the ungodly. You see, he's telling you exactly what I just told you. The stuff that happened in the Old Testament was there to teach us what's going to happen if we are ungodly or turn and look back. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, verse 8, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If all this, this is verse 9, if all this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. Okay. Okay, somebody else added something. Okay. Now, this is what I want to say. Warning to the bride. Many people have been candidates to be part of the 144,000 a.k.a. Bride of Christ, the first fruits, barley harvest, to leave out of here as a righteous believer of God, loving him most and loving our neighbor as ourself, loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can't leave out the Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? You better be asking if you're not, if you're not sure. We have to be as close to perfect as a human being can be. And will we be? No. I sin daily. Y'all, I get out of bed grumbling because I didn't get enough sleep. And then I repent immediately. I thank God. I start thanking God for what I did get. We're, it's just we're human. We're in this, this fleshly body with its flaws. That might not be your issue. Your issue might be something else. I hope you're repenting of it as soon as you realize you're doing it. Okay? All right. So God spared what should have been Lot and his wife and his two daughters. Angels led them out by hand. We could be being taken up outside of time with, by angels. Will we see them? I don't know. But here's the lesson to be learned. Don't look back. Don't worry about your baby. Don't worry about your children. Don't worry about your pets or your husband or, or whoever you live with. You just go and praise the Lord and whew, it should be in the twinkling of an eye. Will there be time to think? I don't know. This story tells me maybe, maybe there will be 
a few seconds for hesitation. And I pray that nobody falls into the category of Lot's wife. I don't think anybody will be turned into a pillar of salt, y'all. I think you just get left. And maybe you repent right away and perhaps you go the next minute. I don't know that either. I don't know that anybody's ever said anything like that. If you know of anybody that's gotten a report, a word from the Lord, you trust them, you know what they stand for, put it in the comments. Because this story tells me that we do, we are not to look back, period. Okay? We do serve a righteous God who is merciful and he loves us very much. He wants all of his brides, that's a term, his betrothed. There's a scripture, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Um, there is a scripture that, let me see if I can find it. Um, by, whoops, this keyboard is so big. Maker is... Thy husband. There it is. KJV. I wanted to give you the reference. Isaiah 54, 5 and 6. All right. Now, it says, pull it up here. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Now, so you remember the verse, maybe if you saw that video I did a couple weeks ago, maybe, where there is neither Jew nor Gentile. I woke up with that verse going in my head. For there is neither Jew nor Gentile. And then later in the day, someone else had done a video. Um... Um, oh, narrow gate 76, her and her six-year-old daughter, her daughter had gotten either dreams or visions. Anyway, the mother was using that scripture and it was on the, her computer, just like this is up there on mine, showing there is, for there is neither Jew nor Gentile, and it goes on to say male nor female. So it's not like bride and groom as in one and one only, as some people have put in my comments, that Jesus is going to marry one woman. No, there is neither male nor female. He doesn't look at us like that. He loves us for loving him. There is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. We don't have to follow the laws of the Jews, y'all. That I put in my couple days ago video one of those two I made so anyway this is getting off on something I already talked about I just wanted to remind you all don't be found like Lot's wife looking back a warning to the bride the first fruits the barley harvest the 144,000 let us all be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the son of man Oh, and there's a lot of possible things coming, y'all. That's Luke 21, verse 36, if you don't know. And remember Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. As I often say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.